Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa with the stockswish.com and welcome. Thought I would do an Apple review today. It is 1.45 approximately on Wednesday, September 11th. And thought I would review Apple simply because it gapped down today. I did look at this this morning. I did rate the gap this morning and watched it. And it, the gap today on Apple actually confirms my overall bias in this chart, which is to the downside. In fact, the, the Apple's in a downtrend. Apple's been in a downtrend ever since the day of the gap, and it is in a downtrend. And when I saw this green bar here, and I talked about this in the trading room, and I think I even talked about it in a couple of webinars too, that this bullish gap was not a buy in this chart and is nothing to do with. You can tell that people bought in this bar. It's pretty obvious because it had a nice fat green bar in the day, but not institutional buying. That's not what happened that day. And that's not to say that there isn't some money that's in there. There is people that trade hedge funds uh, with, with substantial money, I mean, more than an individual trader would have, uh, that take positions in stocks. It doesn't mean they're good positions or savvy positions or accurate positions. There's some people that are running hedge funds that have no, absolutely no clue what they're doing. And sometimes when you see a play like this or what that buy was, that buy there, that buy in the 200 period moving average, the gap up that happened there in Apple with that big green bar that sucks in all the traders that want to go long and some other people that don't know how to read the chart, it, it actually gives me conviction in my overall bias and the continuation of this chart to move where? To the downside. So the beautiful thing about this is that what did it do? Rallied up here, rallied up to the resistance. The resistance I'll go over in a minute, which it held absolutely beautifully. Tried to go higher here and a buy setup, couldn't do it. Tried to go higher here and a buy setup, couldn't do it. Tried to go higher here and a buy setup, couldn't do it. Gapped up this day, failed. Gapped up this day here in the ninth, failed. Failed immediately, went nowhere. And in this day, the market was green and Apple went nowhere. And what did it do after the failure of the gap up, after the failure to go higher, after the failure of the buy setup for the third time, the gap down? And this actually was a short today. The play on this today was a downside. You would have had to wait a long time to get it because it took a long time to set up. You want to be very patient, which I'm not. But anyways, it did set up. And I'll show you the setup here in your day, but this was a beautiful short today. The play was on the short side. It actually was red inside of itself today. Now, this isn't going to break today, but it very well could break tomorrow soon thereafter. Either way, today is the confirmation. Actually, yesterday was the confirmation when I saw this, was having a conversation with yesterday yesterday with someone. Here's the resistance on Apple. In my opinion, this rally up here, the hold of 515, this area here, this day on 819, on August 19th at 513.74 is the high of Apple, uh, the high that Apple's going to make for a long, 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 long time. We'll have to see how it fares out. Apple could do a bullish gap and correct its chart and be in an uptrend. I don't see that happening. I don't think that's likely. I believe that the stock will gap down again and follow through to the downside. If Apple does gap up and turns into a bullish gap, that's one that would qualify per my system to trade, actually buy, actually buy as a new trade in Apple with institutional buying, with new money as a buy in this chart to bring this chart around again, to correct this chart, to bring it in an uptrend, which it's not. This did not make this chart in an uptrend, even though it did higher highs and higher lows. This didn't make an uptrend. And if you're questioning yourself, if you're not sure, if you don't believe what I'm saying, all you have to do is look at today. This broke everything today. It broke all that area today and it broke this green bar. And every Every single person that bought in the screen bar today is not up money. They're not. They were either break even or down. They were actually down at one point today. So do you see what I'm saying? Institutional buying, if they had bought this bar, this would have never have happened. Okay? This would never have happened. It would have carried on through and it didn't. And it would have done something more than this anyways. So this is people deciding to buy in here for the long term that bought in here that it's not going anywhere. Is it's not a proper buy. The stock is still a short. The confirmation that this isn't going higher is happening here. And today is the confirmation. And yesterday too. And uh, the earnings are out in, this, uh, in October. We'll have to see what happens here. I'm going to put this out. I go over this particularly very, very detail oriented. I go over this very, very in very much detail in the trends class. And if you take the gap class, you'll understand how to rate and trade gaps that you'll know what I'm seeing here and saying. But I go over it in very in huge detail in the trends class. And the next trends class is October 1st and 2nd. I go over in great detail how I determine what this chart is doing and what this chart has to do to go bullish and what this chart has to do um, to continue bearish. 
which it is right now. The stock's in a downtrend. The stock is in a downtrend. And so you follow the trend. There's no buy in this until it gets into an uptrend. And the stock is in a downtrend. It's not even neutral. This is so weak, it's not even neutral. Okay? Anyways, my target on Apple for a swinger core trade, and I'm sure I'm the only person on the planet that's saying this, but I'm going to put it out there. So here it is. Target on Apple to the downside if the scaps again and continues and keeps breaking. Long-term target on Apple is $200. Well, there it is. We'll have to see if it does it. Now, if Apple decides to do a bullish gap that is a corrective gap, a corrective gap, and again, I teach this in the trends class too. If it does a corrective gap, to the upside, a corrective bullish gap to change the trend to make this a long, I will know it as soon as it does it. I will see it in real time and live time in the moment that it gaps. But I, it is not doing that now. And my bias is that it's going to continue lower and the target's $200. Now, that could change if the stock gaps up, like I'm saying. But my read on this is that it's going to break. My read on this is that this gap and was sold off and really fell hard into the first sell off here. This is people that are long selling the stock that are selling out of the long position. Some of that went on in here where some people tried to pick bottoms, which kept breaking. Then some of the bottom feeders kept picking in here and they broke again. Bottom feeder, bottom feeder, bottom feeder, bottom feeder. People trying to make a million dollars thinking they're going to buy this here in Apple and it's going to go back to 700. Not only was this not going to happen here, you get the confirmation today. It's less than two weeks since it broke again. So do you see this is not the right way to trade? And you have to have a reason to be getting in something and this was not a good bullish gap to buy. Now, intraday, you may have made money in this. Would I do something intraday that's against the overall trend of the correct way the gap's supposed to be? Absolutely not. Because at any point in time, institutional money could come in and take control again. Take control again, take control more. They're already in control. So the bottom line is what's going on in this, what I see has happened here in this flush down in the last year. It's a year. It's a year from the gap almost, September 24th is people selling out of core longs in this stock. And there might have been some shorting in there, but it was mostly selling of the stock. Institutions have not come back in here to start buying the stock again anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in here at all, not anywhere, okay? So there's no reason to buy it. It's in a downtrend. My take on how this is going to set up is that Apple's going to gap down as a continuation gap whenever it does it. It's going to have to rate high enough to play and trade, which today it really didn't as a short. It was sloppy, although it had a nice uh, move in it. I'll show you. It had a good risk reward in it today, but it was late, which is outside the primers. I like to do things in intraday. But shorting, actual shorting, actual real institution shorting this are going to come into this stock. And when that happens, if it gaps down again and that happens, there will be the selling of the people that have not gotten out yet that are long. Then there will be new money coming in to short the stock. And between the selling of the longs and the new institutions shorting the stock, it's going to dive off a cliff. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't have the timing for any of these things. I, this is how I see it all setting up. Unless, of course, Apple gaps up bullishly. And if it does and it's a corrective gap, I'll know it in the moment that it does it. That's the beautiful thing about trading. However, that being said, you could be in this still short. You wouldn't kill your short in here. You wouldn't kill your short in here if you're in this as a core swing short. If, you, if you're in this all along, you wouldn't kill any of this in here. This didn't ruin anything. And you're getting the confirmation today it's lower. So the target in Apple is $200. $200. I'm the only person on the planet that's saying this. I'll have to see what, ha <laughs> what happens. Anyways, here is the, uh, but that's my read on it. And I explain exactly in great, great detail why in the trends class. Uh, and I also explain the trends class, what it has to do to be in an uptrend. So it's an immediate buy if it does what I say in that class too. Anyways, this is not a short here because it's too aggressive after the rally here into the morning, but it is a bearish gap. Rallies up here, hits in here, you could have taken it, but here's the real entry. Get the confirmation, the failure of the buy set of the failure to go higher. 10-15 reversal time, nice entry in here. And actually, this is a 3R trade. So this was a 3R trade, it's just late. I, I like to take things between 10, 9.30 and 10. This is 10.15, I mean, it's right there. 
but that's what you would have had to wait for. And then when it didn't break the low of the day, you're out. It did go red though, because it opened here and was red in the day. And this really isn't going anywhere. This is probably going to close looking similar to this here. It's either going to close with a topping tail with a small green or a topping tail with a small red. Let's look at the 60, 30. Yeah, so this isn't really going anywhere up today. Somewhere in here it's going to halt this afternoon. 2 o'clock major reversal time. Look, it's rallying right into the reversal time. Beautiful. So this could even come down in here and actually go red again today. So this is my call on Apple here, my long range call on Apple. And you know, how do I know all this stuff? Just like the stuff I saw on Facebook and Netflix and all the gaps that I trade every single day of my life. Uh, I'm reading gaps. I know how to do this because I rate gaps per my 26 point rating system. And that has taught me how to trade extremely well with a high level of accuracy and conviction to be able to read these things, not just for the intraday short term, but the long term too. I tell you, the beautiful thing about the way that I train and the way that I teach people to trade is I am reading the larger day trading. I'm reading the big picture, the day daily chart of a stock, and I'm reading the gap on the daily chart, which is in a big time frame for a day trader. I'm doing that to make sure I'm with the institutions and I'm with the big money. But then I'm taking my entries on the miniature time frame in the one minute, and that's how I'm getting the good to risk to reward. So it's a great way to trade. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only profitable, consistent way to make money trading. And, uh, and it works, and I'm doing it, and I'm teaching people how to do it. So the best thing you can do for yourself is educate yourself really how to trade well in the market. So you don't make mistakes like this buy here on Apple. If you bought this as a swing or core trade, you can see here today it was a mistake. And this is very important. You know, you work hard for your money. You want to put it to risk in the market to be able to work for you to make money. And that's why education is important. You know, people sometimes take classes, they don't get a lot out of them, and then they don't want to take another class. Well, this is part of the process of trading. You go through this. you got to find your way. You're going to find your path. Everyone has a different one. You do need to be educated on what to do. Watching TV or talking to your friends or reading books and things like that are, are not always the best way to really learn how to trade. The best way is taking a class with good information, having a mentor, and someone you can follow that's doing something that you can comprehend, understand, and actually make sense. The th interesting thing about Apple is so many people have a false read on Apple due to their bias. They are in love with this company and this stock, and there could be long it too. So they have a bias. A bias is different from conviction. I have conviction when I trade. When I take a trade, I have conviction. If I don't, I don't do it. Conviction is conviction. I believe in it. And I know it's going to work. I have 100% conviction. Bias is different. Bias is greed. It's fear. It's looking at something with a blindfold on. Bias is not a good way to trade. You're not supposed to have a bias on something that sticks you in the mud and you can't see what's really going on here with the price. I hope everyone sees what's going on here with the price. The open of this gap here was 470.94. The stock traded underneath that today. Down in here. Do you see the low is 464.81? And it broke it. That is not good. Okay. The fact this isn't breaking hard today is because it's just stuck in this area here where it landed on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this followed through tomorrow immediately red and broke. Whatever day this decides to break in here, when this breaks in here, it's just going to go do. And I don't know if it's going to do it in the, on the day and today or if it's going to do it in a gap. If this trades down on top of itself and breaks the low today and trades and closes with a red body at the bottom, it's going to gap down post-market tonight and through tomorrow morning. This is all against the market, too. All against the market. Market's trading crazy, crazy strong. The market couldn't be any stronger the last two days, and Apple's traded bearishly the last two days. Okay? So this is Melissa with thestockswish.com. If you'd like more information, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. The upcoming GAP course is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, September 14th and 15th. If you would like to learn how to trade GAPs, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. If you'd like to do the trends class, it is October 1st and 2nd, and I review point by point Apple in the trends class. If you'd like more information on that, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.